Chase is a special company. You feel it the minute you walk into that plant. That go get them attitude. We're going to achieve our goals. We're going to get where we're going. I think that's really what helps us maintain that leadership in the industry. And that's what has made Chase successful for 50 years. It's a company with an enormous focus on integrity, product quality, service, product innovation. You know, these are the things that are, are really important to us and to our customers. That's made it a very special place to be, and uh, to be part of that's a lot of fun. Chase Brass started as a button manufacturing company in 1837 up in Waterbury, Connecticut. Eventually, as the company grew, it diversified and began to produce more products, lamps, bed frames, ornaments, things like that. And then in 1876, Augustus Chase got involved with some other businessmen from the Connecticut area, and they acquired the company, and that's where the name Chase comes from. The company grew uh, westward. Uh, there was a facility in Cleveland, and then during the war, the U.S. government came to Chase and said, hey, we need more support for you. So they built a second facility in the Cleveland area to, to support the war effort. And then in the early 60s, uh, brass rod demand continued to improve. And some of the engineers said, you know, instead of making brass rod in a corner of one of the plants here in Cleveland, what if we just made one plant from start to finish, scrap is the input, rod is the output. We think we could be very profitable, very efficient. The main objective of this plant was to do one thing, make free machining brass rod and be the best at it, be the most efficient in the world. When they looked at where all the customer demand was for products, they found this lovely cornfield in Montpelier, Ohio, was really the center for brass rod demand in North America. The rod mill went up in 1965. It really changed the industry from 1965 at least into the 1990s. You know, here was a facility that was just focused on making brass rod. You had a bunch of engineers kind of developing and laying out this plant from scratch. They were really learning how to make brass with a group of people that really had not made brass before. So what they tried to do was have a continuous flow of material and so really the plant is, is built in the shape of a U. Scrap comes in the same side that the rod goes out and that has kept our processes very stable, very repeatable, uh, it's still very efficient. The whole idea was if we really focused on just making one thing, the employees could be more focused and more trained, the processes could be more automated and more efficient. But certainly I've heard the stories of the challenges, a lot of new equipment, new processes, and, and new employees. A lot of them in the early days came and they walked right out. They hired a person, they showed them what they're going to do, said I'm not doing that job, and they walked out. They didn't want to work. It was too hard at that time. Hot dirty, especially the early days, but there was a unique group of individuals that stayed here. They wanted to see it through. They wanted to be successful. So there was a lot of learning that took place. Meeting the challenges of starting up a new process with new equipment, new technology. They had that passion to be the best. And we're enjoying the benefits of that incredible labor. We can bring a leaded product, in our case the Blue Dot product, to our customers and they know they're going to get incredible high level of quality and productivity that allows them to be more competitive in their market. Blue Dot Brass has been kind of the bread and butter that's carried this plant forward. And it has basically become analogous when you think about Chase, you think about Blue Dot. Blue Dot Brass is the name that is given to our traditional leaded brass, which the industry knows as Alloy 360. The most machinable alloy in the brass business. It's the benchmark against which all other materials that are machined are compared to. It's really focused on that lead distribution in the product. Lead is what acts as a chip breaker. It allows our material to be machinable. We uh, developed a casting process where we could disperse those lead particles more effectively than really any other mill in the world. Our lead dispersion per square inch is, is the highest that's ever been measured. And without fail, the machinists have always told us when we have blue dot brass rod in our inventory, we pull that first because we can set up our machines and run it over and over exactly the same way today and tomorrow and, and forever. Consistency is the name of the game for making that alloy. Whether it's this bar out of this bundle or a bar out of the next bundle, a customer that takes a bundle of our rod, when he puts it in that screw machine, he wants it to be the same. They're trying to make the lowest cost product at the highest possible quality. And the way that we can help them do that is to make it consistent for them. And the number one item that affects the consistency is the chemistry. Our chemistry control is based 
focused on having tighter internal tolerances than what are allowed by the industry. We have our second uh, generation robotic chemical analysis system. We do about 175,000 chemical analyses a year, all in the name of providing our customers with the most consistent product that we possibly can. Case is noted all over the world for being the most efficient brass rod mill, and it's the people that made that happen. They're by far our number one asset. Without them, you just have a building and equipment. Now, if you go in any brass mill all over the world, you're going to see a lot of the same equipment. But we know the hard work and the effort that goes in every single day. It's not easy making brass rod. We make it look easy. But trust me, there's a lot of things that have to go right out there to make a good Chase Blue Dot ride. Everybody out there recognizes that it's a team effort and we're all rowing in the same direction. I think that's one of the things I really enjoy about the people that here is they're always trying to figure out how to do it better. And it's that ingrained pride that you see every time you go out in that plant that makes it so special. Every time I take a customer through the plant, somebody stops to first of all engage them, uh, but secondly, ask them about how they are, how their businesses and then share a little bit about what they do. They're not afraid of making mistakes. They're willing to try something. If that doesn't succeed, they're willing to try something else. And that like sheer determination and will to be able to make the best product and be able to meet that customer needs. That's really what I see as a real specialty of the people here. They really drive the business. They make the product. They're the reason we've been here for 50 years. 50 years from now, you know, that future is going to be just as bright and it's going to be based on the hard work and efforts of every single employee, past and future, that has been associated with Chase Brass. You know, in the 80s, you couldn't make enough product. That's when our focus was on process control, making the same product 24 hours a day. Driving to make as much as they possibly could, because during that period they could sell everything they could make. That created a need to be running this facility seven days a week. The plant was built to make 50 million pounds. When I started in the early 80s, we were at 200 million pounds. And then the 90s came along and we just had, it was an incredible time for the overall U.S. economy. We began this time where we could just run, and the goal was is to run as much as you could. The beauty of this place is they continue to invest money in it, whether it was make changes to equipment, add new equipment, speed up equipment. Within essentially the same four walls, we got up to 300 million pounds. And it was becoming apparent that, look, we've squeezed this much brass rod out of this little factory as we can. And then when we were at capacity, we initiated Project 400, which was to take the process from 300 to 400 million pounds. And we spent over $100 million and basically wrapped another brass rod mill right around this one. And that not only gave us additional 360 capacity, but gave us alloy flexibility. And when Project 400 rolled out and we were on our way to 400 million pounds, the whole world changed. The 2000s come along and you have the 2001 recession and so everybody's top line was was you know in trouble so a lot of things went to Korea and to China and other lower cost markets and then something else started to happen and that was the transformation from leaded products into non-leaded products. Legislation required that our customers who make parts for the potable water industry had to go with a lead-free material, 0.25% maximum lead, which obviously our Alloy 360 at 2.7% lead cannot meet. The run sizes declined, uh, the size of the orders declined, and slowly, slowly, we watched our dreams kind of disappear. But when you put a challenge in front of the people at Chase Brass, they will be successful. We really had to change the way we think, we, the way we work, and during that period we started having discussions about eco brass. We figured if we're going to be the last guy standing, we had to branch out and do other alloys, something that this mill was not designed to do. Project 400 was not about making 11 different alloys or lead-free brass rod. But that's what we're doing today. And it was a learning curve. But as usual, Chase and our team stepped up to the plate and we hit a home run. They did a lot of things in the plant that were kind of exceptional. Things that were like metallurgically, we didn't think this was possible, but they extruded them faster, they finished them faster. A lot of the equipment was modified by our own operators and maintenance and engineering working together. We would redesign it, make it stronger, make it run faster and make it run better. It's that same will, that sheer determination 
that the employees had in 1965. We had it in 2005 and on. They continued to be efficient and highly productive at still meeting the customer's requirements even though they're incredibly different than they were a decade ago. It is truly a team effort and without the support from our customers and the strong support from our vendors, we, we wouldn't be here today. We've developed what we consider really good partnerships with some really, really good sources. Customers have been doing business with us longer than I've been here. If you were to go back and look, several of our large plumbing customers, we've shipped them since 1966. Once we got the product up, we began loading truckloads of brass and we still do business with many of those companies today. We listen to them. If they want straighter rod or they want better surface, but first and foremost, they want it when they want it. They want it Monday at 8 a.m., we're going to have it at their door Monday at 8 a.m. We are consistent enough that they don't even need a second supplier. Over 60% of our customers are sole sourced with Chase. They know they've got an incredible mill here behind them supporting them, and when we need to pull a rabbit out of the hat, sometimes they pull too. The partnerships are a lot of them were built on handshakes years ago, and we would not be where we are today without, obviously, our customer base, but also those behind the scenes suppliers and vendors that believe in Chase Brass just as much as we do. The scrap people are actually, they're, they're like our quality people. They know what the specifications we want. They understand the business. We've been dealing with them for years. We've got to have metal coming in here on a daily basis to make sure that we're not short on metal and we can keep production going. Our lead times are short, in many cases less than seven days. So we can't be out of metal. You run out of metal, you run out of billets, all of a sudden you run out of product. And so the suppliers have also been a critical part of our success. One of the main reasons that I'm here is because of the relationships with people. Whether it's vendors, customers, and first and foremost, for me, the employees. That's why you get up in the morning, and that's why you're here every day. Chase Brass is a special place to work because it's family-oriented. It's almost like one big family. The family environment is what makes everything tick. If you know the person next to you cares about you or he's going to look out for you, it gives you that reason to get excited and come to work every day. It feels like a family of 300 people. And you can't say that very often today in, in the current business culture. When the chips are down or when you need somebody, you don't even have to ask. They know, they sense it. They're there to help. We have a camaraderie around here. We all look out for each other, whether it's in the plant or over here in the office. We go out of our way to, to treat our people right, and I think that the employees go out of their way to do the right thing. It's an amazing group of people that really have a common link to support the needs of our, our customers, and I think that's so important that we continue to preserve that going forward, and you do that by hiring the right people and empowering them to make a difference. I found it interesting to look at the many family bonds that really are in existence here at Chase. I've had three generations working here, my dad, me and my son, all three of my children have been here. You have people recommending it to their friends and their family to come work here. I remember at one point we did open interviews for employees. We were looking to hire six people and we had 500 people show up for the interview process. One of the things that draws you to Chase is that people want to be associated with a winning team. Not only do you have a low turnover rate, but you have a successful organization. Well, I've stayed at Chase for 23 years because of the people and the, the system here. Where else am I going to find a well-paying job and an employer that I feel is still going to be here a long time? You know, certainly Chase goes out of our way to pay a competitive wage, but on top of it, I think we just, we treat our employees well. We provide, you know, obviously attractive benefits, and on top of that, you know, we do what we can to make sure we're engaging our employees. you got to work for a good company that cares, and Chase does that. There's a certain pride that we all have. I feel pride in trying to do the job the best I can. That's the passion they have. They want to keep this going. And Chase does an excellent job of trying to be flexible to keep those employees, you know, positive and engaged. We want to spend a lot of money on training in the organization. Without question, we know a, a more informed, educated employee is going to be able to contribute more. And it really gives them opportunities to work elsewhere and see what other opportunities are within the company. You do those things to keep ahead of the curve. And that's, I think Chase has really done well with staying ahead of the curve. You know, a company can never just stay status quo. You have to continue to, first of all, identify and understand what your customers need and then develop a strategy or plan to respond to that. Chase's ownership continually supported investments to reinvent itself. 
That's one of the things that's made Chase what it is. You've got a good management team that's looking forward. A parent company like Global Brass and Copper that values the need to invest in the future. Most of our money is spent in the plant, making sure that we have new technology and the best processes out there for our employees. The plant has improved immensely from the day I hired in to what it is now. It was dirty. It was hot. All you can see is eyeballs and teeth. That's how black the plant was. I mean, it's just a whole lot more modern what it was back in the 60s. We've always strived to improve the workflow. You're talking going from four logs in casting to six. We used to pull them out one at a time. Now they pull all six of them at once. We had one foundry, now we've got two foundries. We had one press, now we have two presses. And over the years, the company has continued to make this a safe workplace for our employees. Our emergency response team was really developed out of necessity. They met on shift. We gave them the best training, we gave them the best gear, we even got our own fire truck. And that's the commitment that this company has had to our people and to the plant environment. Now, as we have gone through this transformation in our business and we've introduced the green portfolio, we now have Green Dot, which is EcoBrass. EcoBrass is a lead-free, corrosion-resistant brass that is suitable for a lot of different applications, but the primary market for it right now is the portable water fittings. The idea of making a product with no lead in it in a factory that everything around it is leaded was a huge challenge and a huge undertaking, and it still is today and now that we've learned how to cast it we're really truly casting it faster than anybody in the world. EcoBrass has allowed us to enter other markets that we would not have anticipated and which Alloy 360 could not perform well in. This product truly has some superior characteristics that may take us to a different level. And in hindsight it was critical that we did that. I can't imagine where this company would be today if we didn't make that investment. Chase has always spent a lot of money on these improvements. And all the things they've done have helped to make Chase a better company, make it more environmentally friendly for its employees, and make it a better place to work. I think at the end of the day, successful companies do a couple things well. First of all, they hire the right people, train them and empower them. They work hard to identify the customer need and then provide solutions to that customer need. And it's not something where you pick a point in time and you do it and you're done. It's ongoing. Just because you were good doesn't mean that you're going to be good. You have to work at that. And, th and that's what Chase is about. When you have multiple people retiring with over 40 years of service, you're doing something right. For the younger guys, it's something that they'll be proud of one day when they're sitting in this very spot. It's a great symbol of the American dream, people working hard and being successful. And the real work ethic that's here and the dedication to not only come to work, but to really drive and make something truly special. That's been really the, the doorway to the future for us. The future of Chase is more of the same. Lots of challenges, but with the right leadership and the right group of people like we have today, they'll be successful. So whether you're a customer, a supplier, or an employee, you've been part of the 50-year history of Chase Brass. And what I want to say is a sincere thank you. Our customers, our vendors, our employees, it takes that whole group to make it successful. Thank you for all of your support over the last 50 years, because without you, certainly I don't have a job, 300 of us don't have a job, so I thank you for all of the efforts that are directed towards making Chase the successful company that it is today. I think that we are only at the early part of Chase Brass and Copper. I hope it's around for another 50 years. I would love to see the 100th anniversary of, of Chase Brass to come. Because I've got a son that works here. <laughs> That's a good incentive. And that maybe I'll be asked back to, uh, to the anniversary. <laughs> I think like any businesses, we've got a lot of challenges uh, ahead of us. But what I do know about Chase is you've got over 300 people committed to meeting the customer need. And I think that we'll continue to do the right thing by identifying and meeting that customer need. And everything we do internally in the plant will be focused on getting better, empowering our employees. And regardless of what the future looks like, we're going to find a way to continue to be successful because it's ingrained in us. We have worked very, very hard through many, many generations to bring that value to our customers. And if you consistently do that, that's a recipe that'll last forever. And that's, that's our hope for Chase, that it lasts forever.